Tonight we're hearing more about yesterday's accident on Interstate 29 that left the Brookings Fire Department shaken up and for good reason. Parker Brown tells us what happened and how they hope drivers can respond in a story that is new tonight. Parker. Hey Brian, this was the scene that Brookings Fire Chief, the Brookings Fire Chief responded to. Two of his firefighters were on a crossover to enter southbound lanes. A semi truck was forced to hit their brakes to avoid hitting a car who hit their brakes right in front of them. The rig was jackknifed and diverted to the median where it met the utility vehicle of the Brookings Fire Department. It's creating more conversation about why these preventable accidents are happening. A lot of things went through my head. Like, I need to be there, but I can't. It's the last thing that a fire chief ever wants to hear on the radio. Brookings Fire Chief Pete Bolzer was on scene of an injury accident when he heard of another involving his firefighters. I got on scene, and probably the best sight I ever saw is my two firefighters standing around. Bolzer says that the semi-truck did the safest thing in the events that led up to the accident. The driver would have certainly crushed the smaller car and they limited damage by braking and going through the median. What the truck driver couldn't have seen was the Brookings Fire Utility Truck. They were telling me their story this morning. That they couldn't do anything about what was happening even though they saw it coming. We looked out the window and they could see the semi coming right at them. And one of them told me the only thing I thought of is How's this going to work? <laughs> While this was what Bolzer called a freak accident, sadly they're becoming more common with distracted driving becoming an even greater issue. The slick roads didn't help, but many first responders are reporting more collisions with emergency vehicles on scene caused by drivers not paying attention. It's a lot more dangerous, but to, to be more cautious on everything that we're doing, I don't know what a solution would be either other than tell people, you know, please just pay attention to your your driving. First responders hope the conversations about driving around emergency vehicles leads to change because until then there's unnecessary danger and hesitant volunteers. I think this scared a lot of my firefighters even more than they are afraid of roadway incidents. If we had to go out there tonight, I think I would have half the attendance that I did yesterday. It's going to take some time to get confidence back. The two firefighters who were in the truck during the accident have no major injuries, just mostly bumps and bruises caused by their seatbelts. Bolzer says that he believes that their seatbelts saved their lives. The real damage was psychological and financial. Most of the fire departments in South Dakota are volunteer and use fundraise money to buy equipment. They're just happy that both men are safe because they can't be replaced. Brian. Parker Brown tonight. Parker, thank you.